The Painting with Magic Show with Brandon Thomas is brought to you by BrandonThomasArtSupply.com, home of the Brandon Thomas product line, and by the Brandon Thomas Instructor Team. Go to BrandonThomasArt.com to find an instructor near you. Hey, it's me, it's me, it's Brian T here with the Painting with Magic Show, and today I'm excited to get in here and get monkey faced on it and do another nice little painting for you guys. So what I'll do is I'll have the colors go across the screen for you that I'll be using this little painting. And as usual, I have a 16 by 20 canvas uh, with amazing one on there. And this is actually a Fredericks a Red Label canvas. I get a lot of questions on what canvas I'm using, and that's a Fredericks Red Label. Uh, and the pen I'm using is the Grumbacher Pre-Test. So if you're interested in those things, make sure you check them out. They're great products. All right, so what we'll do is take our two-inch landscape brush. I'll tell you what, let's go into a little bit of Prussian Blue. Just a little bit. This is some strong paint, guys. So be very gentle with it. Very little bit. All right, let's go up here now. So what we'll do is we'll do a little X stroke and work it across the canvas. Very lightly. All right, so what you want to do is you always want to start lightly and then work it up as you go, okay? I'm going to reach back in there a little bit more. And when I come back, I always start on the corner. There we go. And I thought we'd do a nice mountain scene today. I ain't done a mountain in a little bit. And I thought, well, today let's do an actually a, a mountain that's actually going to have some detail to it. All righty. I get a lot of questions on those, so I thought we'd do one of those today. Okay. So I'm just taking my time, just putting some blue in here. And you'll see I notice I'll kind of edit in different spots and I automatically get little um, cloud movements automatically. Okay. Then I'll just reload really quickly, same way. And then down here, try to throw on some more blue. And that amazing one on the canvas will lighten it up. Yeah, good. And then just in case we have some water, we have some water down here. Okay. Let's take us a little number six fan brush. Let's kind of pop us a cloud in there real quick. We use some titanium white. There we go. And we'll come up here and just kind of scrub us in a cloud. I'm not too worried about the, the clouds too much today. Alrighty. Hope everybody's been doing well. I know I ain't been uh, posting anything here lately or been filming any new shows here lately. It's been really busy here at the studio doing some classes. And if you're interested in taking some classes, I'd love to have you come down and take a workshop with me. Alright. So now I'm going to take this brush and I'm just going to gently go over just to blend them out just a little bit. Like I said, I don't, I don't care what's going on up there today too much. Okay. Now I'll take my number 10 palette knife. Let's make us a mountain color. We'll take some titanium white, some Prussian blue, ivory black, some phthalo violet. And we'll mix those in there. Nice some black. Maybe some burned umber in there too. Kind of graze it down a little bit. And now I'm just judging how I want it. And then I'll take this color and I'll kind of judge it up here. And that's good. So I'll give it a little roll of that paint. And push it in there, old canvas will take it. I get a lot of people who don't want to push in there too much and they don't let that paint push into the canvas. You want to get in there and show it, show it who's boss. Something, something about like that. I'll take my old two inch brush and we'll kind of pull these down a little bit. 
Because we have Amazing One on it, automatically allow me to pull this mountain around. Many people don't realize what Amazing One is. Amazing One is an oil-based medium, and it's white, and it goes on this canvas here so we can blend and all that good stuff on here. Automatically creates multiple different colors of value. All right. Okay, well, we're getting some good storms right now, too. So if you hear a little thunder going on, it's okay. We'll be okay. All right. Let me just wipe off my old knife. Okay. So we'll take some more titanium white and some burnt umber. And there's a little bit of that mountain color in there too. It doesn't matter. And we'll get a little roll of that. There we go. I'm starting this off with this color. Just kind of getting me a, a color going on. That's going to allow me to work off of that and build off of that. It's the same old color. It might vary. It's okay. Let it go. Because if you let it color like that, right there, it's going to give you even more details and shadows in there. No pressure. Let it break. So what I'm doing now is I'm just mixing up some more of that color that we already made. Let the mountain do its thing. Just kind of let the mountain and the knife kind of just play along. And then I'll start kind of shaping it a little bit more with the shadows and stuff. Right now I'm just kind of throwing on another base color that I want all the textures going in there. See that? It's just a little nice little texture. That's because the tooth on here. I can kind of roll it around a little bit and form all the nice little textures in there. Okay, something about like that. And you want to throw a little pressure on whenever you're doing this here. I let the paint off the knife kind of work its way into the canvas. When you're going in for a highlight or you want to kind of chunk up a little bit you want to use no pressure okay at this point now what you want to do is kind of want to kind of stand back from it or kind of blur your eyes a little bit and kind of see what you got okay so now we'll make up a lighter color so I'm going to take some titanium white mix it in there with it a little more burnt umber And then we'll just kind of see kind of what we have. See, just a little bit lighter. So I wanted to go a little bit more lighter than that. So I'll add more titanium light. Okay, so we're just taking the same color and we're kind of highlighting right now. But we're adding more layers and layers to this mountain because that's what mountains are. They're layers and layers. And the sun hits it because the mountains and rocks are so jagged that the sun will hit it and can wrap around it. It can make all kinds of different looking shapes on a mountain. And they got multiple different tones of rocks and everything. So that's what we're doing right now. Just kind of adding extra little, little things to it. Okay, so just kind of take your mountain and kind of do what you want to with it. I kind of follow these steps here and you'll get a more of a detailed mountain. So now we're going to take more white and add it to the same color. And take a little roll of that. And then back on top of here. Now if you've got a good paint, it's going to work for you. If your paint's a little too runny, it ain't going to work for you too darn good. You want a good consistent paint.
If you need any help finding some paint, you can always let us know and we'll help you try to our best to help you out. Let's go what I use. Okay, as you see this mountain starts to come more and more alive. Okay, you got all those different colors. Different uh, shades and everything. I'm just kind of taking that same color. Just kind of made more of it. And there's a little bit more white in there marbled into it. It's good. Okay. Now I'll take more white and I'll add it to it to make it just a little bit lighter. Okay. And we'll take that now up here. Kind of, just kind of add it in different places. Now you may not, it may not show up because it's pretty close to that. One, so I'm gonna line up some more. You kind of, you kind of dance that kind of where you want the light to kind of just kind of hit it. I wipe off my knife a little bit and just kind of blend that down into it. See there? Now for the shadow, I'm going to take black and some burnt umber. Kind of mix them together right there in that mountain color. Kind of add those extra to it. Same mountain color we had before, we're just adding more black and brown. Okay, I'm going to use a little small edge of the knife. Kind of do that with. I'll tell you what, we're in some tornado weather right now, so. And some strong stuff going on. If you live in Kentucky, uh, one day it's summer, one day it's spring, one day it's, you know, uh, winter time. You never know what you're going to get in Kentucky, so. Uh, it's always an adventure here. You can get 30 inches of snow, and then by that evening, it's 80 degrees. Always looking for spring. We don't know when it's going to be here yet, though. We usually don't get spring. We usually get winter, and then we get summer. We get, like, very few. Very few spring. See, I just kind of added some extra little black in there, a little darker shadows. Again, I don't plan this out. I just kind of just let it kind of flow, and I kind of look for things. Then I'll kind of scatter some of that in here. Okay. Something about like that there. I'm just going to mix up some more paint. But I hope this makes sense to you that you want to add these little extras in there. A little dark and stuff. That's good. Depends kind of how you want it. If you want it to be nice and dark, you can leave it like that. But if you can also add a little bit of a light blue color or something like a grayish blue color and kind of add it to it too. I want to kind of make some of that. So I'll take some burnt umber. I'll take some blue together. Kind of going for a gray blue color. And then I'll just kind of put a dot or two in there. Kind of wipe off the knife a little bit. Then I'll kind of work it in there. Kind of look at it and kind of judge it and Kind of see if, it's, if I want that in there or not. I so say you can let this mountain come through there. See how those little grainy things cause the texture of the canvas? Cause you just scrub like this. The mountain is coming through is like melted snow down there. That easy. 
very easy little trick to do to get all those nice little bumps and stuff. That's good. There. My belt's off again. Okay. Now I'll take some more of that lighter color. And just kind of add a little bit more in there. You can kind of have it kind of come out over like that a little bit. You can just pull that paint around there. If you got a, like I said, you got good enough thick paint like this that's not too dry, it's going to do anything you want. Okay, like that. See? Anything you want to do, it'll do it. Okay. Now I'll take my one inch brush and it's dry and clean, and down here at the base, I just want to tap it a little bit. It's kind of with amazing white kind of hits it. And I'll take some titanium white with that. It's kind of tapping it on there. It kind of created some mess a little bit here. Just a little bit at the base. Let me get rid of all my little things. We can use those for different things there. So let's see. I'll kind of back up, kind of look at a little bit. Then right here could be another little rock. Kind of another little peak kind of sticking in there. Okay. Now see our some of those are gone now, those little areas there, but I kinda just done to kind of show you kinda how you can do all that. Take those same old colors again, kind of starting again like that. Okay, it's pretty good. You can kind of see where they're where the peaks are. Go back to that lighter color ahead. And maybe I want there's snow kind of running off this mountain. I get questions on that there. How do you make it look like the snow is kind of melting off the mountain? Heck break. All those nice little breaking and, and everything like that. You can form nice little things like that. can just flow like that too. So you can make it up however you want it to be. And you can let that paint, that paint will go wherever you want it to go if you have the right thickness, the right consistency. Okay. Righty. Then right inside here, we're going to put a little peak. I'll do some black for that. See those little dark, that little dark just separates that. And same with this side. Okay. 
Okay, then once you kind of have that going, we take some of that, that blue color we had, and then you put that in there right next to the little mountain there, the little peak there, because it's in the shadow. And your, sh your snow's going to be shadowed. So you got to make sure you remember that. It's not going to be that beautiful, crisp white snow. You're going to have some of that beautiful, shiny shadow snow. And this is what gives you the realistic look of all that. That little bit of blue snow. And you make sure you don't put yellow snow in there. Okay. You can have some little bit of that in there on that. Kind of on this too, because there's going to be snow here as well. And so it's kind of, uh, this, there's some snow melting off this old mountain. I'll get questions on how you make that look realistic. And on this side, I want it to be more shadow snow. So again, I'm just mixing that blue and that brown and a little bit of white. Burnt number. A little more blue in it. See there. Like that. You can even make it a little bit brighter blue. That really helps it to set in. But whenever I'm painting a mountain though, I'll just go back and forth and back and forth with it until I kind of see what I want. And But you'll get a feel for it to where you know when to stop. Some, you know, a lot of people, they'll work on a mountain and not know when to stop on it. And they'll say, when do I know to stop? You'll just, you'll just have that feeling you'll, you'll just know when. Once you paint a number of them. Alright. All that good stuff there. All that blue in there. But you don't want to overwork the paint that's on here. Because if you do, you'll make a big clumpy looking thing. It will have all these different textures. See there? There we go. Nice old mountain there. Then we can kind of... Oh, it's a little too dark. Let's take this one inch brush. I'll take some amazing white. And I'll take my little hake brush. It's a soft little blending brush. I just want to soften them up down there. Just a little bit. Another thing I want to address in this video is what do I use to wash my brushes with? Um, what do I recommend? Uh, well, I recommend uh, for to use is uh, mineral spirits, odorless mineral spirits. Uh, you can find it either in a hardware store or you can get artist grade mineral spirits uh, or odorless terpenoid, whatever they want to call it. Uh, but odorless mineral spirits is what I use. Uh, in my own studio here. Sometimes I'll use baby oil every now and then or the DIY brush cleaner but when I'm painting on these videos or in my studio here teaching classes I always use the mineral spirits. It's cheap, it's quick and it washes them extremely well because it gets most of the pigment out of there. Uh, if you want to condition your brushes uh, every so often you can use Jack's linseed soap is a good one to use. 
uh, which really works into the brushes. You can find that some most art supply stores or online. Uh, so those are always good options to use, but for the most part, I'm using mineral spirits. So if you have any, if you've been asking that question, you want to use mineral spirits. So I've been getting that one a lot. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of look back at this and kind of see what I've got real quick. Okay, and then you can see here on this mountain here, it has some negative over here. Nothing's really going on over there. So I can fix that. really quickly but it's kind of mixing up some of that light blue color let's take some more white now I want to show you what this color this blue looks like without any burnt umber in it okay I just white and blue when I grab some burnt umber, it starts graying it down. See that there now? The reason it is is burnt umber is actually just a really dark orange. And orange grays down blue. Uh, if you've not watched my primary art course on YouTube, I have on here where you can, I'm not sure if you've seen it on video, but I have a color wheel here that you can download on my website. And I'll show you how to make this and paint uh, several paintings using this as primaries. And so it teaches you kind of how to gray color and stuff. So right here, let me show it back up here again. Okay. I'm just going to kind of fill it in with some of this lighter blue. And that way it's not so empty. All right. I'll have some texture back there. So if it shows up, it's not so empty. Then what I'll do now I kinda wanna we'll do that to it. Then I'll kinda just eat gently kind of tap it up to kind of let it fade into the blue okay that kind of looks pretty good Yeah, I want to do a good long video for you today because I ain't done one in a while. So I want to do something that's kind of been requested a lot is do, do a mountain like this and kind of answer those questions as I go. Alright. I'm always throw a little snow down there too. Then I'll just kind of soften it down, but kind of pulling it out. Okay. All right. So now I'm uh, thinking about doing it here. Couple little touch ups here. Kind of going back and forth, look at the whole mountain overall. See where you can make it a little more interest. If you have anything that's like a sharp line, you, you want to get rid of it. Well, here I kind of scatter since it's more dark, add more texture. That dark just, just represents texture, it'll just add to it. Right, kind of showing that mountain kind of coming through. Get over 
here. I can just kind of scatter some of that back there. Just adding little things like this really adds to the depth and the detail of your mountain. Again, sometimes I'll come in with an idea of what I want to do on the mountain, and sometimes I don't. But um, it is good to, though to have an idea of what you're going to do. So if you're going to try to do a detailed mountain, maybe try this one here. Try it out. Then you can play around with it and kind of develop your own little techniques as you go with it. All right. So I'm going to look at that. It looks pretty good. Okay. So now I have to figure out what I'm going to do next to this mountain to the rest of the landscape. So what we'll do is we'll just mix up a dark color because we think about it trees now so same way we always mix dark tree color and this is not illusion crimson this is theo violet the reason i switched theo violet for most of my painting sometimes i'll use illusion crimson but for the most part i'm using theo violet because it's permanent illusion crimson is not permanent uh and we'll go into more videos on that i'll do a video going over that about the colors but uh, for now we're going to theo violet because it's permanent and the uh, crimson isn't. Alright. Take a number six fan brush. I'm just going to tap into this. And these don't have to be uh, trees that's going to last on here, but we can just say maybe there's trees poking out of here. Or some something kind of poking out. Well, you can see maybe there's a, a cliff or something here. I'm going to kind of follow that mountain. Kind of thinking of an idea. Now I'm just playing around with the with the thing. I'm wondering about a waterfall here, maybe. So right now I'm just throwing out some ideas in my head and throwing them on the canvas lightly, and then. Then I can work with it and so maybe I want that or maybe I don't. And so because you got that mountain runoff. You know, that's snow and that's gotta go somewhere. I don't know. Maybe a double fall or something maybe in here. It's kind of a good idea. So just play with the ideas. What you got in your head? Like rocks living in here. So for now, let's kind of go with that idea. I'll kind of go back to my colors. Got that dark color. And that's going to run a tree or two in here. And so I just kind of tap around a tree. Way dark in there. You got that tree. Like 
that. But like that. Again, we play around with it as we go. And I don't care if it makes sense or not. If it, you know, what I'm saying because. It's about the, the artwork. So I've had some paintings that just didn't make any sense at all as far as the runoffs and things. And it just and it would sell. More than something I would do that's based off a photograph or something. And so don't worry about stuff being accurate. Work about, worry about something being pretty. It's kind of pleasing. I've seen some stuff that's crazy looking. That's, it's because it's nice looking to look at it sells all right so maybe there's maybe these trees don't go with the water maybe they're out here it's always making those decisions up and down kind of different i want to do something different okay it looks different so I don't like doing the same type of painting over and over and over again. That's why my books, they take longer for me to create books because I want to do something different each time I do it. Each project in the book, I want to be different. And so I always think really, really hard on my projects for those books. Okay. I feel they take me longer to do them. But you see, we're framing it out now. So we kind of can see the landscape coming together. And that's one thing I get from people ask me all the time is how do you get a landscape to kind of come together? And that's usually the hardest thing you can do is getting it to come together. You can work really hard on a mountain and then don't know what to do next. And so sometimes you just got to start, start putting paint on the canvas somewhere if you're not going off a photograph or something. Like today... I just want to take your questions and then kind of answer them on the canvas here. Not really worrying about what I paint. But kind of answer your questions. I get questions on waterfalls a lot too. Because I don't paint a lot of them on here. I used to paint. That used to be all I did paint with waterfalls. And now I'm just using my fan brush to kind of block all this in. Uh, just for now. All right. So, no, no, no. What I want to do is add some darker stuff back here. So I want it to be a little darker back there. And so what you're kind of seeing is me just playing around today, really, on the canvas. And it's kind of going with what happens. So, nope. A lot of YouTubers will have a plan kind of going into it, but a lot of times I don't, I just wing it most of the time. So that's what I'm doing today. Just kind of let my mind play around here. Working with the colors. Now I'll take, I also have some magic on the, on the palette, and I'll take some Hansi Yellow, a fan brush, and some of that tree color. 
together with amazing white in there. And I'll just kind of tap it in there. And I'll come back here and I'll kind of tap in some grass. Because you're seeing this one part, one angle of this river in here. Yeah, there we go. Also, while I've been away, I've been reading more into the Bible and things like that. Got baptized not, not too long ago, a few weeks ago. And so, if you ever like talking about the Lord and stuff like that, let me know. And I'm always want to talk to anybody about Him. So, let's go outside. You see what God's creating. You come back and like, wow, you know, the best artist ever. So, uh, you see some crazy stuff that doesn't make any sense in your head. You'll see it's like, wow, you know, nature is just so crazy. Uh, you see God's thumbprint on everything. And this is just a guide. It don't matter to her. You may say, well, where's that mountain out there in the water? Let's put him in the water too. He needs to be down there. So, we're just kind of taking do some textures like that. It's a dark color. Just to kind of represent that mountain. With texture. Because the water's moving. There's a big waterfall down there. So you know it's going to be jaggedy and stuff. So Okay. Then we take some of that lighter color and you can kind of just scatter him in there as well. So that mountain is pretty much in the water. And you can kind of pull it down just a little bit. Okay, you're just looking for those little textures. Hints. Now, now, when I paint, I don't worry about accuracy. I worry about just kind of impressionistic. You know, you don't have to be so accurate with your painting to make it look right. All right? You see, now we have an idea that that mountain is in that water. Go back to the old fan breath we use the grass. Alright. And if it now stick and add a little more amazing white to it. Now, this is oil painting, in case you don't know that. I got a lot of people ask me, is this acrylic or is this oil? Uh, it's oil painting. Okay. Again, we're just kind of down some color. Take some amazing wine on a knife and start adding in some water lines and stuff. Kind of 50 50 amazing white and some titanium white together. Want to stand back from what you're doing and, and look at it. And right there, probably get cut off because we're going to put a big old rock in there. Okay. Use a little bitty part of the knife now to get back in these little cracks. Because people ask me also, do you have a little small knife available? And I use this big old knife because it has a little bit small knife on the edge of it. Um, I've looked into other knives and possibly developing some more knives for the line. Because people ask me about that all the time. But well, I'm adding anything extra to it. Uh, we'll see. We have some ideas. There we go. Now let's take a look at what else we can do to it. 
We could take a liner brush. And then some classic clear. And we can start putting some little stones and things back there. And I'll just kind of thin down some of this dark color. It just needs to be dark. And you can start doing some little rocks and things. Back in here. The key to using the liner brush is to have a thin paint. Because if it's not thin, it's not going to roll off of it because it's so tiny. Unless you're doing something specific where you need it to be dry uh, for certain effects. But for the most part, when we're using this thing, we always thin it down. You can see it just adds little extra details and, and things into your painting. Don't want to spend too, too much time on here, but I do want to kind of show you some things. Let me take a silver brush. You kind of add some bigger ones in here. You can add some bigger ones in here. And I do add just a little bit of a classic clear to that on it, and it just helps it smoothly go on. Okay. Now before I start adding in the waterfall, Okay, so now we kind of got it laid out here pretty good. Let's start working on our little waterfall here. And uh, what I'll do with that is I'll start this with some titanium white. And then I'll grab some amazing white with that. And then we'll kind of see what we got. When we'll do that, I'll start pushing it up a little bit too. And so what I do is I kind of just kind of, kind of like I'm skating through here, and then I'll just kind of let it fall. I don't want nothing too, too dark. That's why I didn't throw anything underneath it. Okay. Yo, and if it ain't smoothly going on through there, add a little more amazing white to it. Now, amazing white. We we'll use it multiple different ways. We we'll use it for applying it as a base coat, and then we can use it for uh, highlighting and thinning down colors. Just like we're doing right here. So with this, we'll just kind of pull it back a little bit like that. So it kind of just forms into the water. Okay. Same with this one. Almost as if you're doing a wave, you know? 
Okay. There. That's good. Oh, thank you. Okay, that looks pretty good there. There we go. And see, it's that easy to do a little waterfall. See? You could do those. No problem. Penning isn't very, very hard at all. Alright, I'll get some black and stuff like that. And then we can put ourselves in here a rock. Kind of lives right in here. Now this whole thing's rock. It's just lower than the water, and it's flowing over it. So, you could throw rocks inside there and everything. You could do all kinds of stuff. But today's purpose, I'm not going to do all that. Because we're doing a pretty good long video right now. And I just wanted to show you, basically, how you do the waterfalls and nice mountains and stuff. And kind of laying out your mountain. Nice detailed mountain. Alright. Running. And so we all know that this is on a cliff. It's on a big old rock here. So we can draw a big, big old rock there. Because it's got to hold back that water. Alright. It's got to hold back that water. If not, it'll run over top of it too. Because water is very, very free. It'll go wherever. Wherever you allow it to go, it'll go. Just gotta hold it in there. Okay, see that? Simple. Alright. You know how far down that goes. It can go way down through here. So now I'll just kind of come in here and I'll kind of highlight my little rocks and stuff. Adding those little textures and things like that. And we've done rocks and stuff like that on the show before near waterfalls. and I'll show you how to do them with a two inch brush, how to do them with a, a fan brush. But I'd like to thank everybody for subscribing because we just hit 30,000 subscribers. And that's amazing. Remember when I started doing these shows, we had 88 subscribers. And it's crazy. We got 30,000 people watching. Well, we had over 2 million views now, but we have over 30,000 people subscribed to the show. And there's a lot of people who don't have YouTube channels that watches and so. I do know a while back when we started to go and start doing shows on, uh, they call it VidMe in the decon at the time, and we were going to crank up new shows for just that, and then they closed down that whole website, because YouTube, uh, sometimes it's hard getting on YouTube going, because they favor a lot of the big YouTube channels, and they can do just about what they want to. We've had videos being flagged for I have no idea what reason for it's just a painting show. Uh, and so, I have no idea why we was getting flagged. But they was trying to take down videos and stuff for unknown reasons. Okay, so now we'll start putting some grass here. So I'm going to take some amazing white, big old two inch landscape brush, and some of that dark green. Okay, so now we can start throwing in some grass. Okay. If it ain't sticking right, I don't want to get sticking right now, so I'll add some more amazing white. Make sure you use enough paint. A lot of people are very, very stingy with their paint. You may be thinking, well, you know, paint's not very cheap. I understand that. That was my biggest problem when I first started was I wasn't using enough paint. And in return, I was wasting more paint because I wasn't using enough. All right. So if you want to get your brushes to work right and you want your paint to look professional or look, you know, presentable, you need to use enough paint. Okay. 
I don't even sell paint, so you can't say I'm trying to sell you some paint because I don't sell the paint, okay? And a lot of people say, oh, you're just trying to sell me a brush today. Well, they do work. People who have the brushes, they, they tell me, you know, I thought, hey, I thought you were just trying to sell me some stuff, and I bought them, and man, my paints have changed tremendously. And so, we don't make much money off these brushes at all. We try to sell them to you as close to cost as possible. So you get a good deal. Alright. So we're just throwing in some grass in here now. Kind of nice and soft and colorful. And so right there, that nice sharp edge there we have. That's a no-no. You don't want them sharp edges in there. So you get rid of them. We can throw grass in there. Kind of hangs off like that. You see what I'm saying? He has some. You just want to break it up, okay? You need to break it up. You don't want them to have sharp edges in there. Because when you do that, it can hurt the it hurts the flaw because you don't see sharp edges in nature. And if you do, most of the time it's not right. So I got a little white paint on there, I just kind of smashed it around there and it kind of added some stuff to it. Alright, so now let's start highlighting some trees. I'm using the Hansi yellow, some amazing white, some dark green. Then I'll crunch the brush into the into the paint. Like that. Just tap it in there. And then we'll just kind of come in here and just on the edges, kind of just let some of the highlights go. Alright. So sometimes I like them to be, to be dark and not even highlighted sometimes. Sometimes I'll just highlight the edges. Like that. Sometimes. And sometimes you take another old fan brush. I got several these little brushes going. Okay. And then on this sun, <clears throat> we'll give him a little bit of color. Kind of add to him, gives him more of a little dimension to him. Alrighty. Then, then, then. I'll take some color here. Then here comes a rock. And then there comes a highlight on the rock. And then we just soften it up like that. Now let's see here what I want to do to this one. What else can we do to it? Because it don't want to look boring and flat. Right now I kind of feel, feel like it's a little bit flat. I you can kind of scratch in some stuff. That'll kind of add some more dimensions. It breaks it up a little bit. Okay, right there I missed a little spot. He's a little bit of a highlight on him. There we go. Okay. Okay. Now we'll thin down some paint, some that dark color, some using some classic clear medium. Just throw in a few things like that.
Now, one thing that people do that hurt their tree making is they'll just start working on one side and they won't add anything on the opposite side. And that will give you the, the realistic that was an old dead old bush there. Yeah, there we go. So you want to go on both sides and I'll give you that roundness of the tree. Okay and so for now this is what we're going to do for this one here guys. I try to put as much information as I can in here to start us off here on season six of Painting with Magic. You know we've been doing so many shows on here for absolutely for free. So I enjoy teaching, I enjoy sharing with you guys and I love for everybody to share these shows with everybody know. Share them on your social uh, media accounts. That really helps us spread the word of these shows and gets us more views on here. Uh, so I can create more episodes on here. You, know, you must say, well, you don't create that many. Maybe once, two a month. If we have more people watching and sharing the shows, that's when we know we, we people want more shows. That's usually when we start uploading more shows and we start sharing the shows. So you keep them sharing, you'll keep me painting. So <laughs> keep sharing the shows, guys. It really helps me. I really love your support. So I'll tell you what, we'll sign this little picture. And I'll sign in with some of this here light color. So yeah, every time you share these shows, it helps us so much. But I really do hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you learned something from it. If you learned something from it, comment below. Let us know. Let us know how you liked the video here today, the little episode of the show. And I love hearing from you guys. If you're interested in becoming an art instructor... I have my own art instructor program. We've been training people now for a few years to teach these, this method of painting. Uh, it's a program that you do on your own time uh, from your own home. So you don't have to do no traveling or anything like that. So it's really convenient for anybody. So there we go. We got a nice little mountain there. Nice waterfall scene. Some, some nice things going on in this picture. And I hope you learned how you take a no idea at all because I didn't have an idea or what I was going to do in this painting and I just kind of threw it all together so I hope you learned something from that kind of how I work with the paint and stuff and uh, again subscribe make sure you subscribe to the show and guess what this one's ready for art gallery so is yours and I'll see you real soon Magic Show with Brandon Thomas is brought to you by BrandonThomasArtSupply.com Home of the Brandon Thomas product line and by the Brandon Thomas Instructor Team. Go to BrandonThomasArt.com to find an instructor near you.